Oh, hi guys. Uh, in today's section, I will be looking at how to uh, auto-populate a local feed from another local feed, right? So here we have an applicant name, which is the local feed. If I scroll down a little bit to the patient section, um, and this is a subgrid uh, to the travel booking uh, table as well. So if I click on new patient, so I want this patient name to be auto-populated from the applicant uh, name from the local field there. So, and this is what we'll be looking at, how we can achieve this uh, using JavaScript. Now, let's take a look at the, uh, those tables, right? So uh, if you look at the uh, applicant name, yeah, it's gonna see that it's a local field. So when I click on that, and this take me to the uh, applicants table as well, right? So, and this is the name I'm looking for, right? So now when I click on the, once again, on the patient invoice, right? So this actually now get me to the, uh, the another field called, another table called the patient uh, table, invoice table, right? And so, and how can we, now get those properties. So first I need to go to my table uh, in Dataverse. And here, as you can see, the booking travel, uh, travel booking, uh, which is the, the main table itself, where we're re retrieving uh, the record, uh, the applicant's name here. So now uh, if I go back to the, uh, the uh, travel booking, uh, and if I look at the tool, then I'm looking at the table definition. So the first thing we ought to look at is to look at the, the navigation property, right? How can you get the navigation property? But before I go to that, so let me show you some kind of script that I have uh, written already. Then I'd like to show you uh, this one, All right? So um, in this script here, you see that uh, this is uh, just a function being called, and this is where I'm calling the function actually. And here, from here, you can see that I'm getting the uh, the form type and uh, what I want to create. So upon creating, when the form type is uh, uh, create, right? And also I'm getting the the booking uh, travel um, application, right? I'm getting the attribute. And also, this is where I'm checking if the local field is not empty, right? Or is, is or is undefined, right? So this dot first to check to see if the local field is right is uh, actually um, is not known, right? So here I'm also retrieving the ID of the booking travel, right? So here. I'm also, uh, when, you, when you retrieve the ID normally, so the ID will come in with uh, uh, curly braces, right? And so in order to remove that, I have to use this to replace the curly braces uh, right here. And again, I'm also um, getting the, um, the booking uh, uh, value itself. Then after that, I'm, I'm converting that to lower case, right? So I think this is the way the main and actual work is going to be done, right? So if I look at here, you see like the API here, I'm using the API to retrieve the record. So now I'm going to show you how you can get some of these properties, right? So now this is the book of, uh, booking, uh, booking travel table. And uh, this is the ID I'm getting. And also this is where the color I'm selecting, right? So it is a look of value. And also in that value, I'm also getting the, the name all right, so how can I get the name from the value? So I have to use expand, right? So from here, I'm also getting the name. So this particular uh, field uh, is called the, the uh, navigation property, right? So in getting the navigation property, you know, when you, uh, if I minimize a little bit here, right? So if I go back here and if I go back to appreciate invoice, so once I click here, right, this actually navigates to this patient name, right? So this will call the entity uh, reference 
uh, navigation property, right? So how can I be able to get that? Because sometimes uh, you might want to go back to the database table and at first you look at the um, the tools and you click on table definitions, right? So in that table definitions, we have these, um, which can name? increase a little bit, right? So you have the, the entity definition and in order for you to get the, uh, the navigation property. So what I need to do is simply is to, um, you know, look into relationship one to many relationship. So if I, if I look at the four slash and then, so this is going to look at the many to one relationships, right? Then if I look at scroll down a little bit to the uh, table metadata, so I'm, I'm looking at it here. So this is a referencing entity navigation property name. So I, I will copy this. And then if I go back to my script here, so this is where you can be able to, you know, to get to your navigation but I paste it here as well, right? So in constructing your own data query, right, you get the, uh, the uh, applicant's name value, the lookup, which is this one. Okay, which is this applicant name, right? So if I go back, if I use my, uh, let's get name here, uh, level up. As you can see, this is kind of the applicant's name. It's a local value. So how can I get this local value? So if I go back here and if I click on the two, go back to the data table, and here, let me just put it to one. And then if I have to look at the applicant's name, as you can see, this is the value, right? So I'm getting the value, uh, this particular um, name. Uh, feed name, feed value. So um, here, in constructing that, right, so I'll show it properly from the code itself, right? So if I go back here a little bit, yeah, uh, let's close this one. Now, so here, uh, this is the org name, right? And this is the uh, the book and travel table, right? And also I'm selecting the uh, the value itself. And also I'm getting the navigation property and also getting the name here. Now, once I get the value and also I'm expanding this value to get the, the, uh, the name, right? Using the navigation property. So how can I get this also name, right? So if I go back to my table here, Okay, let's get name share from here. So if I click on the control so, and I'm also I'm getting this name, right? So if I go back uh, to the level up, uh, let's get name here. As you can see, this is the name I'm actually looking for, right? So most of the times, if you need to construct your web API, it's usually good practice to, uh, first of all, look it into, into the browser and check if those properties results into, um, uh, we give you some kind of result, right? So now, if I go back to my query and I copy this query, for example, and here I'm going to, um, let me close this, let me close all of this property. And here, I'm going to close this. So now, if I paste this on the browser, and this is going to give me uh, the result into, this is going to give me the value I'm looking for, right? So you can see the value, uh, the local value for applicant's name, and also this is it, uh, the ID of the booking table, the main table itself. And also this is the applicant's uh, name itself, right? So if I scroll down to the one that has actually have a record, uh, you're going to see that um, I should have, Okay, so um, so this is how you can be able to retrieve the R. So how can I use this auditor query mm -hmm. in my web API, right? So if I go back here, as you can see here. So here, I'm selecting the value that once again, value the expanded, then also I'm getting this. So once we get able to get the result from the 
a browser itself. So we're good that our query or that query is constructed properly, right? Now, so I'm using that result to get the, to check if the value, to check the value and also get the, uh, the ID of the, of the record itself, of the look of it. And also I'm getting the name as well. And uh, from there, so I'm creating the, uh, getting this uh, array of ID and the name of, and the entity name, so which is the applicant's name itself, the applicant's table that I showed you earlier. So if I go back here, uh, if I click on this, so this is the, the entity I'm actually getting the value from, right? So when that is done, um, I'm also updating the uh, the patient name here. As you can see from here, uh, I'm not setting the value. Sorry, I'm setting the value of the patient name uh, using this the lookup uh, uh, value from here as well. So if we look at here, if I go back here, the patient invoice, and as you can see, if I look here, so I'm getting this patient name. And also updating that as well. So, um, so um, basically, the updating the look of value from another local table is something most of the times might be required based on your business, and also based on uh, probably how you're retrieving and business requirements, and how can you be able to uh, you know uh, you know retrieve the value uh, first. One of, the, one of the best practices that I used to apply for myself is to, uh, first of all, get the result from the browser uh, using the query and to see if you read, if that is yielding to the result, then you can go ahead and continue with your uh, web API retrieve record, right? So you can also find some kind of documentation that can also be available to you from Microsoft site as well. Retrieve related table for for instance, by expanding the single value navigation, right? So here you're going to find the uh, the sample of the Microsoft has given already, and also you have to you can expand the name uh, using navigation property as well uh, to get your result. Okay, guys, uh, I think this is where we are going to end this section. Um, I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Thank you.